you're sort of a, an observer of a very different way of living that goes back in time and hopefully forward in time, you know, 10,000 years or 20,000 years. The activity for the lamb, I mean, some of it's functional, obviously. I mean, they have to move from foraging patch to foraging patch. There actually are attacks by predators, and so they have to evade predators. But some of the other activity is play, and that's basically practicing what they are going to have to do as adults, or even things that they're going to have to do as lambs, but just getting better at it. And that's running, you know, these just flat out streaming runs the lambs will do. It's evasive movements, um, suddenly shifting, you know, direction and accelerating and jumping up on ledges and, you know, all of that kind of thing is, is practicing skills that are the difference between life and death. It's energy well invested. whether it's ungulates or birds or anything else. There is the idea that animals have an optimal time for giving birth or um, laying eggs or whatever. The, the issue f in terms of reproductive timing for an ungulate, because they eat plants, is what happens to the timing of the, the reproductive schedule of plants. The reproductive effort by females is thought to peak sometime early in lactation. They're eating plants, that means that um, the maximum sort of peak reproductive effort should coincide with um, peak productivity of the plants that they eat. So in northwestern Montana, um, one of the predicted effects of climate change is changes in average um, precipitation. Um, not necessarily throughout the year, but certain months of the year, changes in average temperature, and those things affect plant growth. So what that would suggest is that that peak productivity of you know the, the plants that they eat might shift back, might come earlier. So what could happen is that females are um, timing birth improperly um, so that that peak expenditure is coming at a time when there's not enough food. Well, then you may reduce weaning weights amongst the lambs and reduce survivorship over winter, the first winter when they're all on their own. And those individual effects are going to have population level effects. So one big question is, can um, an animal, a species like bighorn sheep, if in fact peak productivity changes if it comes earlier in the year. Can populations of bighorn sheep and other similar species, can they track shifts in the optimal birth date? Um, if, if they can't follow a shift, so they're no longer giving birth at the optimum time, then there's going to be some consequence, some fitness consequence for the mother or for their offspring. It may be that females, when they're suckling offspring, they may also be expecting to lay down some reserves, some fat storage for the next cycle. And so you can have these ripple effects, you know, between reproductive cycles. Around here again, one of the other things that's happening with climate change is reduced precipitation during summer. Regardless of whether there is a change in the optimal time for giving birth, change in temperature and precipitation can change seasonal habitat quality. And so as soon as you either shift the optimal date for birthing and the ungulate doesn't shift its annual routine, or you have reductions in seasonal habitat quality, forage availability, there could be many consequences. The message I would like to get across is to you know, start thinking about what the consequences of climate change might be for large mammals that eat plants. You know, we're in a position where we, we have to deal with the fact that the climate is changing. But, you know, I guess fundamentally, um, it seems to me a mess. I mean, we, 
it would be far better if we weren't in this position at all because what we're talking about, we're, you know, we're, I'm looking at one species and there are thousands of them out there and not every one of them is studied or is going to be studied. I've been studying bighorn sheep since 1979, and um, yeah, you get really attached, you know, to not just the individuals, but to the species as a whole. It's quite an amazing animal. Now with a, a 30 year history, I think it does give you a connection to this sort of deep time. You're witnessing a part of that stream. I think if we keep on the path that we're going, we're just gonna have to live with a very messy fallout.